Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contributions on this channel. Please kindly subscribe if you have not subscribed and also click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. In this channel, I bring information to your doorstep. I bring news from all channels, from every angle. Things that have to do about the world, things that have to do about Africa, more especially Nigeria. I bring it to your doorstep. Some informations that you ignore, some information that you cannot be able to come across. I look for them, I bring it to your doorstep for you to see. Every video you see on this channel is for educational purpose, to keep you up and get you aware of what is happening in the contraption called Nigeria, more especially. I bring the information to your doorstep. They are not lies. Most of the videos you're going to watch here are videos that are coming from the conventional media. And some of us sometimes are lazy to get into it. Some of us are, sometimes are too busy to be able to lay our hand on this. That is why I bring the videos to your doorstep. Watch from beginning to the end. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes so that you can be educated and know what is going on. Let us watch together. At the end, you can go to the comment section and put down your comment. Give your opinion. Say it the way you feel it. Nobody's going to come against you. It's a free world, and this is the social media where people say it and set the record straight exactly the way it is without being controlled. Do that on the comment section. Let us watch the video together as it comes. Thank you. All right, guys. Oh my, it don't happen. It don't scatter everywhere for social media. This woman don't come out again. This woman, where they call Naja to? It, she don't come at, come open another hidden secret, saying that the first lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, is part of the cabal. Guys, what this video is on the cabal? Yes. Well, well, what constitutes a cabal? We have to even un try to understand what a cabal is. A cabal is a secret political group or faction that are like masked, but that they manipulate and control the system. They manipulate and control everything that runs in the government. That is what a cabal is. And let me tell you who one of the cabals is, is Aisha Buhari. Aisha Buhari that is talking today is part of the cabal. Yes, we knew uh, the cabal of uh, Abba Kiaris of, of late, the mom and the rest, that she couldn't even come out to say. When she started talking about the cabal, she glossed on it. She didn't have the guts to come out and name names. I named names. For the first time in Nigeria, I started to name names. But that's still in line with what you're saying. With yeah. this, because um, this is you mm. saying this, I just wanted to clarify that this is you, you saying that um, the First Lady is a member of, is one of the cabal. But recall that when uh, Governor yes, Naira Ufai, hold on. I want to when say Governor why El I said Ufai, it. Yes, when Governor El Ufai okay. mentioned this, she actually reposted the video as if in, in support of his claim that there were people who were sabotaging. Is that not contradictory? No, no, no. She said, she, she reinforced what Erifa is said. She agreed with what Erifa is said. Erifa is said that the cabal in the villa, and she confirmed it. But what I'm saying is this, she is also part of the cabal. I am trained to, not to say they did this. We are trained to name names. You have to have the guts to tell Nigerians who this real, the, the cabals are. And I'll tell you why. One, if you look at, we, we are discussing, the, the hardest thing for Nigerians now is the question of changing this, this money. People are in a very, very dire situation. Even I had to know how to mobilize to send my mother ingredients, tomato and pepper. It's, it's, it's terrible. I am stressed up. So think of the millions that have to work daily to feed. But what is happening? They are talking about the, the cabal and they are talking about themselves. They are saying, what Erufai is saying is that uh, why is changing money is okay, but why now for elections? So is it about elections or is it about Nigerians that are suffering? And whose election? Their election. This is the point I'm trying to make. So when they are talking of the, of, of the cabal, the, her brother, her, Aisha Buhari's brother, same mother, same father, is the DG now or MD of meeting and printing. So what are they, what are they talking about? When you talk of MFLA, Central Bank, the next thing you talk of is minting and printing. Her brother, same mother, same father, is, 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 is the head of minting and printing today in Nigeria. So how cabalish can you be? And for, for, for them to accuse the cabal only for themselves, that at this point in time, at this point in time, when did Erufai or any of 
APC governors stopped to talk about ASU strike, the killings, the kidnappings of people, they've never discussed that. It has never, as we are talking now, hundreds of children from Kepi for over one year, for over one year, kidnapped uh, girls from, uh, 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 from Akebi uh, Secondary School are still with the bandits for over one year. But nobody ever said about it. And, and it's 84 people were killed only yesterday in Katsuna. 84. But they didn't bother. It. Every single day, Nigerians are being killed. Look at what is happening in the Southeast. And they don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter who kills you or when you are killed. What happened, what matters is that you are dead, you have been killed. It doesn't make any difference to the victims. So it doesn't make any difference to Nigerians when or how they are squeezed and strangled for lack of the currency that they will buy their day-to-day -day needs. So they should, they should stop lying. They are, the, they are the real culprit. And we should also not forget uh, Erufa'i's memo. If you remember Erufa'i's memo after the... Uh, uh, the, 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 the death of, uh, of, of, Nas, uh, of, of um, uh, the former chief of staff, uh, Abba Kari. The memo was leaked in which he, he, he Rufai, was, was, um, was insinuating or was saying that there are people that he wants to, he actually wanted to be, uh, to replace Abba Kari. He did everything he could to replace Abba Kari because he said otherwise. Some people are already boasting that they will choose uh, the next uh, petroleum minister. They will do this, they will do that, they will hijack everything. So he wanted to be part of the cabal. So, I mean, what are we talking about? Well, Daniel, um, let, me, let me just let our viewers know that you're, you're actually not in Nigeria, which is why we're seeing the backdrop that we're seeing behind you. You're, you're in Paris. Um, and we're going to come to Professor Odenta Odenta in a minute. But I don't know if you know, the APC have released a statement today suggesting that Atiku Abubakar does not have the poor people of Nigeria at heart. I, I think you touched on that briefly. And that if he did, he would not be supporting this policy of the redesign of the Naira. They've also suggested that those who operate money, money deposit banks and the oil marketers have created this Naira logjam and the fuel shortage to force the presidential election to favor Atiku Abubakar. And that their candidate, Bola Tidubu, has chosen to pitch his tent with the poor masses. They described Mr. Abubakar as public enemy number one. What would your reaction be to that? So what they are suffering from what a condition called pantophobia. It is an increased anxiety that is triggered by the fear of defeat. They have had the government for seven to eight years now, actually eight years, to bring democracy and good governance to the people that would not have warranted this policy in the first place. The suffering of the masses. When was the last time Tinibu stood for the masses? Even when the NSAR started, Tinibu was part of the people that stood with the establishment to crack down of the people who are expressing their own freedom of expression as enshrined by the Constitution. When was the last time in the midst of this cacophony and the troubles of the Nigerian people, you have seen over and over over the years that Tinubu had at any material time spoken on behalf of the masses. In contrast, Atiku Abubakar, in response to the need to grow and develop the society, has created an educational institution and has given opportunity to the children of the less privileged via scholarship, some of whom have even gone ahead to study in Harvard University and they are back contributing this to the system. Atiku has introduced industries and, 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 and companies that has recruited Nigerians, thereby improving their purchasing power and affecting their lives positively. Atiku has always stood on the path of true democracy and good governance in this country when Tinibu was busy introducing and enforcing what they call dynastic politics, where he believes that the nation owe him the obligation to make him the president because in their view, he has done enough to warrant that. And they have failed to even draw, if they, are, they have conscience, to tell the Nigerian people that the candidate they are parading that they want to produce as the president of Nigeria has not answered very fundamental question of the allegation of drug trafficking and narcotic trafficking. 
this is fundamental because you cannot relate and connect with the world when you become a president if the govern this nation is governed by someone who has such allegation he has not been able to come out to explain anything these governors when the president introduced local government autonomy what did they do the autonomy would have produced good governance at the local level thereby giving purchasing power and opportunity to the people at the local level these same governors conspired against it the el rufai who also spoke against uh, a party and said the president didn't have any reason not to support them 100 percent and be partisan when the party took a decision for good governance Erufai led a group of people that insisted that Adam Sosho-Mole must be sacked. So to them, their definition of good governance is as enshrined by them. He has even, through BBC, insulted the sensibility of the elders in the North when he said that their governors are the true elders and that the elders in the North are overrating themselves. Since Sir Amadou Bello Tafawa Balewa, we have never had such a decent and contempt of the Northern elites and elders like the way we have heard from him. And he has also spoken, he has always spoken with these assurances, they will win, they will win because they have an agenda. But I have a good news for you, Mr. Charles and Egoli, and by extension, the Nigerian people. The president has vowed, and this is what is in the docket of the international community, that he will deliver a free and fair election. He will not vote from them. Their meeting today with the president was a failure because he refused to concede to their demand and rather he said he needs seven days to introduce a crackdown that will make accessibility to the Naira easy for the people. There is nothing they can do to change this fact. Atiku is for the masses. Atiku believes in growth and development. Tinibu is for himself. He calls himself a Milokon. Everybody is working for him as if Nigeria owe him an obligation. Meanwhile, he has not contributed anything to the country as a nation that will warrant even that thought and that idea. And to hold the opinion that the country owe you an obligation is the greatest slap you can ever give to a free and democratic society. The, Daniel, just very briefly. On the cabal. Yes. Well, well what constitutes a cabal? We have to even un try to understand what a cabal is. A cabal is a secret political group or faction that are like masked, but that they manipulate and control the system. They manipulate and control everything that runs in the government. That is what a cabal is. And let me tell you who one of the cabals is, is Aisha Buhari. Aisha Buhari that is talking today is part of the cabal. Yes, we knew uh, the cabal of uh, Abba Kiaris of, of late, the mom and the rest, that she couldn't even come out to say. When she started talking about the cabal, she glossed on it. She didn't have the guts to come out and name names. I named names for the first time in Nigeria. I started to name names. But that's still in line with what you're saying. With yeah. this, because um, this is you mm. saying this, I just wanted to clarify that this is you, you saying that um, the first lady is a member, of, is one of the cabal. But recall that when uh, Governor yes, Naira Ufai, hold on. I want to when say Governor why El I said Rufai, it. Yes, when Governor El Rufai okay. mentioned this, she actually reposted the video as if in, in support of his claim that there were people who were sabotaging. Is that not contradictory? No, no, no. She said, she, she reinforced what El Rufai said. She agreed with what Erifa is said. Erifa is said that the cabal in the villa, and she confirmed it. But what I'm saying is this, she is also part of the cabal. I am trained to, not to say they did this. We are trained to name names. You have to have the guts to tell Nigerians who this real, the, the cabal are. And I'll tell you why. One, if you look at, we, we are discussing the, the hardest thing for Nigerians now is the question of changing this, this money. People are in a very, very dire situation. Even I had to know how to mobilize to send my mother ingredients, tomato and pepper. It's, it's, it's terrible. I am stressed up. So think of the millions that have to work daily to feed. But what is happening? They are talking about the, the cabal and they are talking about themselves. They are saying, what Erufai is saying is that uh, why is changing money is okay, but why now for elections? So is it about elections or is it about Nigerians that are suffering? And whose election? Their elections. This is the point I'm trying to make. So when they are talking of the, of, of the cabal, the, her brother, her, Aisha Buhari's brother,
same mother, same father is the DG now or MD of meeting and printed. So what are they what are they talking about? When you talk of MFLA, Central Bank, the next thing you talk of is minting and printing. Her brother, same mother, same father is is is, is the head of minting and printing today in Nigeria. So how cabalish can you be? And for, for, for them to accuse the cabal only for themselves, that at this point in time, at this point in time, wh when did Erufai or any of APC governors stop to talk about ASU strike, the killings, the kidnappings of people? They've never discussed that. It has never, as we are talking now, hundreds of children from Kebbi for over one year, for over one year, kidnapped uh, girls from, uh, 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 from Akebi uh, Secondary School are still with the bandits for over one year. But nobody ever said about it. And, and it's 84 people were killed only yesterday in Katsuna. 84. But they didn't bother to, every single day. Nigerians are being killed. Look at what is happening in the Southeast. And they don't care. They don't care. It doesn't matter who kills you or when you are killed. What happened, what matters is that you are dead, you have been killed. It doesn't make any difference to the victims. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have been educated with this video. I hope you have learned something from the video you just watched. Please go to the comment section and put down your comments. Whatever you think about the video you have watched, or anything you have learned that you wanted to share together, go to the comment section and keep yourself busy. It's a free place where people share their opinion. And please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time a video comes out. And also, share the video to your family and friends. Share it to all platform so that people can get aware of what is happening in the world, mainly in the contraption called Nigeria. We have to keep people on their toe, keep people informed on what is going on. That is exactly what we are doing. Every video you are watching in this channel is for the purpose of education and nothing more. Thank you so much for watching and remember us. Bye-bye. See you again. Thank you.